Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be showing you realistic techniques and tips that work in the real world and not just behind the lens. If that sounds like something that interests you then I, I invite you to continue watching, subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. Let's start off with contour. The purpose of contour is to create a shade and to emphasize some structures of the face. So when we contour we essentially create a shadow or create depth. The first thing I'd like to talk about is the shade of the contour. We often see makeup artists online using a bronzer to contour, which isn't really effective because a bronzer is usually warm toned, whereas a contour shade is usually cool toned to create shadow and shadow is always a bit grayish. But of course we can't use gray or black on our face, so instead we use a cool toned brown. For example, these two shades from the Sigma Sculpt palette are cool shades, whereas the one in the middle is warmer shade, which is perfect to be used as a bronzer. Often bronzers also contain a shimmer, which isn't ideal to create depth with, because shimmer reflects light, which means it enhances something, it brings it forward. The second thing I'd like to talk about when it comes to contouring is over contouring, which means basically contouring in places where it's not necessary to contour. For example, someone with a short forehead such as mine doesn't need to contour their forehead because it's just going to create a smaller forehead for them. Someone without a big gap between their eyebrows and the hairline doesn't need to contour that part either. Um, someone, um, someone with a small nose or those who have had nose surgeries, they don't need to contour their nose. At the end of the day, what we have to keep in mind is to keep the face in proportion. Okay. So if you've had a nose job done and your surgeon has followed the golden ratio rule, then, then they would have already taken into account the size and shape that would suit your individual face the most. Therefore, there's really no reason for you to contour the nose. I also see a lot of people just contouring for the sake of contouring underneath their jawline to emphasize it. Now, if, you're, if you have a double chin, then by all means you can do that. Or if you have some sagginess around the sides, then you can by all means contour that as well. But if you're still young and you have nice taut skin and a nice tight jawline, then there's no need for that. And one of my pet peeves is people contouring the lip line. So what we often end up with is a messy outlined lip, which kind of looks like the lipstick has matched, or it looks like there's some fluff around their lips, which isn't really what we're after. The reason why they go ahead and contour the lips is to create some depth and to make the lips look fuller. Now, there are other ways of how you can create a fuller lip, which are, as I've often said, there is no such thing as one size fits all when it comes to contouring, because everyone has a different face shape. So when it comes to emphasizing the cheekbones, not everyone needs to follow the same technique, not everyone needs to follow the same line or even the length of the contour. So in some cases it's often enough just to contour that part here and then stop. Whereas with other face shapes it's recommended that you bring it down a bit closer at a diagonal line towards your lips. So please take into consideration your facial features, your age and the proportions of your face. I nearly forgot to point something else out that I've noticed with contouring and that is applying creamy contour over the foundation, setting it with powder and then going over the top of it with powder contour. That's not necessary because if you contour your face with a cream and you've set it with setting powder then there's no reason for you to come back and contour it again. This way you're just really piling up products on your skin and I can guarantee you it will look cakey. Another place that you're really wasting your time and effort in contouring is the eye socket. There's no reason for you to contour the eye socket. It'll be covered up with eyeshadow anyway. <laughs> I'll, I'll contour my face now according to my personal features to show you what is needed for my face shape and where it's not. This part of my nose is quite wide, okay? If I followed the, my nose shape with the contour, what I would be doing is basically emphasizing the width of my nose up there, right? Instead of following the nose bone, basically, cartilage, with the contour shade, I'm gonna have to draw over that width and pretend it's not there so I can make it look slimmer. 
So I start up there. That's the widest part off the top of my nose. And then I'll bring it down. We know mascaras come in different shapes and forms and the ones come in different sizes as well. The most efficient way to apply mascara is to apply it from the roots, give it a wiggle and then lift up slowly by doing a forward moving motion. This way you're guaranteed to coat every single mascara from the bottom to the tip but also in between as well and you won't end up with clunky spider leg lashes. If you have your makeup done by a professional, then please refuse for them to apply the mascara directly onto your lashes unless they're going to gift you the mascara. Because I still see it so many times, even now after COVID, that makeup artists apply mascara on their client. They put the mascara one back to get some more product. They double dip basically and put more mascara on their lashes and then it goes back in there. They take the same mascara over to the next client and repeat the process. Now there's a lot of bacteria, a lot of germs and even viruses that can live in our lashes on or in our eyes. But also we have to keep in mind that mascara... But also keep in mind that ma mascara is moist and bacteria and viruses love moist environments for them to breed. So please be very careful and don't be afraid to say no to your makeup artist if they're going to apply it directly onto your eyelashes. Make sure that they use disposables. And even with COVID I still see a lot of makeup artists still applying lipstick with the same applicator that it comes in. But sometimes they try to make an effort and actually use a brush. But the problem is that they dip the brush into the lipstick apply it and then go back into the lipstick to get more product on. And that obviously means that you have doubled it. So if your lower lashes are short, then a way to coat them is to lay the mascara wand flat like this and then just gently pat the mascara wand onto the roots of your lashes. And if you want to extend them, hold it upright and then coat every single lash like that. Bring it downwards. If you make a mistake when applying mascara and you get mascara accidentally on your skin, please avoid using eye makeup remover or micellar water to remove the mascara because you will be removing every other element underneath the mascara as well, which means obviously your eyeshadow. What's even worse is that makeup remover, whether it's micellar water or eye makeup remover, actually oppose makeup. So what happens is that when you try and come back to cover up the eyeshadow is that the makeup remover will reject any kind of makeup product that you're going to put over the top. So instead of using makeup remover to clean up any mess from your mascara or eyeliner, I recommend using a concealer, a cotton tip, and then gently wipe up where you need to without rubbing. So you can roll it up or roll it down and then go over it with powder or eyeshadow. And that's it. I hope you learned from my techniques. Please let me know what you think of them in the comment section below. I will list the products that I used in the description box down below. Some of them are affiliate links, but not all of them are. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And feel free to share these videos with your friends. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.